Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about Godzilla, the Half Century War. The um, I guess I probably don't really need a much introduction on what who Godzilla is. You know, 1954 giant monster me metaphor for nuclear explosion, yada yada yada. Anyway, um, um, this uh, basically is sort of like a sort of legacy type thing. Um, Taking place, uh, centering around a soldier by the or a soldier by the name of uh, of uh, Ota Murakami, and it starts out as um, <clears throat> and it's basically just a bunch of short stories around this guy as he's having to live through um, essentially well a half century of Godzilla's shit, you know. Um, you know, it starts out in um, 1954 with. Um, with, the, with Murakami and his friend uh, Kentaro uh, in the Japanese Defense Forces as they uh, encounter Godzilla for the first time, you know, and they have to, like, uh, save a bunch of civilians from the guy by, the thing by distracting him and stuff, and, um, <clears throat> yeah. And then uh, going on to the 1960s with the, um, with the, uh, you know, wake with Angura coming into the picture, then in the 1970s when we see, you know, Rodan, Mothra, Hidera, Megalon, and so on and so, so forth, and, um, <clears throat> and yeah, it's just, uh, you know, just 50 years of Godzilla shenanigans and this, get this poor soldier having to go through all that, all that is, uh, what actually one of the first members of the AMF, the Anti-Megalosaurus Force, and uh, yeah, is um, one thing that I'd like <clears throat> it's all like it all looks really cool, and um, although I kind of wish they would uh, focus a little more on uh, you know like how life has uh, actually sort of evolved for like the, the whole planet instead of just this one guy, because I mean like. He's just uh, just this random dude who's in the AMF, and that that's it. Like I would have liked to see like more of a uh, how Godzilla's presence has affected the entire world, not just uh, this one other dude. Um, also uh, taking place um, during this is a little is a subplot revolving around uh, this rogue scientist named uh, Doctor Dever Deverick, and uh, you know he's building like psionic emitters to like try and control the monsters uh, it doesn't end well and um yeah um <clears throat> overall um i have to be honest like i'm not exactly the most into godzilla you know like i'm just sort of casual kind of watcher every now and then you know and i don't really get like the <clears throat> sort of like fanboyism that some people have like like all the he massive hatred on the 1990 on the Roland Emmerich film, for example, I was like, like or like it's not Godzilla. They took the god out of Godzilla or or something, and it's like, huh? Like it's just a giant lizard that wrecks stuff, and is yeah, it's like it's it's a metaphor for nuclear, for like a nuclear bomb. But aside from that, um, uh, there's not really much to say. It's just this lizard that wrecks stuff. That being and not well, that being said, like I also know that uh, you know uh, giant monsters are not exactly the most uh, like not not exactly everyone's game. You know, some people aren't it. Some people are are like uh, most people are probably not gonna care. So like as a result, I have to give this a three out of five. Recommended if. If you're actually like a you know a Godzilla fan, then of, you're, of course you're gonna love this book, and most likely you've probably already read this book, you know. But if not, you're probably not gonna care either way, and um, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, um, next time we're gonna be talking about one of the more unique uh, science fiction post-apocalyptic things to come out of the last couple of years an all original thing Snowpiercer 1 The Escape and its sequel Snowpiercer 2 The Explorers until then see you later and have a nice day
and uh, support your local libraries with your donations and uh, patronage and so forth and yeah.